Welcome to the tutorial Understanding Morphing, the first video in the Morphing video tutorial series. So objects such as smoke, water, hair, fire, clouds, etc. can be time consuming to animate because these effects are slow moving and therefore require a large number of closely placed in between drawings. So the idea behind morphing is to take two relatively simple shapes and let the software generate the drawings in between. The difference between morphing and say something like interpolation or, or motion tweening is that it not only moves an object from one place to another but it also changes the form of the object in a pretty natural way from the first pose to the second pose. But one thing to bear in mind when you're designing your key poses for morphing is time as a factor. Um, complex shapes take longer to morph so if you think it's going to take you longer to morph a drawing than to just draw the in-betweens that's probably better just to hand draw the effect. So the principle behind morphing is that the software matches two shapes um, from two different drawing poses and what I've been referring to so far as drawing poses are actually known as the source and destination drawings. So the source drawing is obviously your starting drawing and your destination drawing is the way that you would eventually like your source drawing to look. But in order for morphing to work, there are several rules that these shapes must adhere to, uh, known as the morphing rules, which I'd like to go over with you right now. So before we begin, I'm going to draw two shapes very quickly. Okay, so on our source drawing, we have two shapes. We have a square with a black outline that was created using the brush tool. Um, and then on our destination drawing, we have a circle that also has a black line, also made with the brush tool. And that both these shapes, this circle and this square, both have the same fill color, which was the nose outline swatch. Then on the source drawing, we have a circle that has a contour of, about, I believe, 100 points. Um, and its contour was made using the ellipse tool, which is a central vector uh, line tool. Its fill was the skin outline. And then on the destination drawing, we have a rectangle that also used a central vector line tool, the rectangle tool, to make its contour. Um, its contour was also made using the same color, so the G border, um, except that it's only five points in width. And its fill color is exactly the same as the circle, and that's the skin outline color. So the first rule in morphing is that similar shapes will morph into similar shapes and I'll show you what I mean by actually creating a morphing sequence. So I'm going to right click um, on all these cells here and select morphing, create morphing. Oh, I think it's because this one's highlighted. So let's try that again. There we go and we can see those little arrowheads so we know that the morphing sequence is there and that this is the destination drawing and this is the source drawing. Um, and as you can see, that even though geographically this circle is closer to this circle right here, the software doesn't get confused and it doesn't turn this square into this square or this circle into this circle. And it's because they're dissimilar shapes. Um, they're dissimilar because this uses a central uh, vector line tool for its contour and its fill colors are different than the fill colors here and the contour or the, the type of outline that this shape has. So the software is smart enough to know which shape to morph into which shape um, irrespective of positioning. 
So the second rule is that a pencil line always must morph into a pencil line, or like we were saying before, a central vector line will morph only into a central vector line. So what that means is uh, the pencil tool and any of these line rectangle ellipse or polyline tools can morph into each other, but they can never morph into a brush stroke or a zone. Um, and in addition to that, there must be the same number of strokes if you're using a central vector line tool as opposed to a brush tool for both the source and destination drawing. And this can get a little bit confusing and I'll show you why. So I'll select the pencil tool um, and actually I'm just going to get rid of this morphing sequence first. So I'm going to select morphing, delete morphing. Um, and let me select the black outline color. So if I do something like this, um, to most people that would be two strokes, but actually it's four strokes if you're using the pencil tool. There's one, two, three, four strokes. And on the destination drawing, if you then only draw two strokes and then create a morphing sequence, you'll see that part of the source drawing has disappeared and often sometimes it's the uh, destination layer, sometimes it's the source layer, because it's trying to compensate for the fact that there are not enough um, lines or strokes to make a match when it's doing the morphing. So I'm going to get rid of that morphing sequence again. And then um, get rid of these strokes. So similarly, just as a pencil line can only morph into a pencil line, a brush stroke can only morph into another brush stroke. Um, a brush stroke will never morph into any type of a central vector line um, and vice versa. The next rule is that Animate Pro does not morph colors. So you can create um, a, a type of color morph or a color transition at the compositing level. Um, there are effects that do things like that, but the morphing does not. And in fact, um, not only do you have to use the same color uh, for borders and fills, but you also have to use the exact same swatch. So even if this swatch has the same RGB value um, as, say, the black in a different palette, I'm not even sure if they do, but let's double check. So this is all zeros, as is the rabbit outline. So they have the same RGB value. Um, the fact of the matter is, is in the back end of the file, um, they have a different ID. So the software doesn't read this swatch to be the same as this swatch even though they are the identical color and have the same RGB value. So it's very important that when you're coloring that you use the same swatch for borders and color fills. So the other problem that we saw um, with the four strokes turning into two strokes is that when the software can't find an analogous fill color, often what it'll do is it'll, it'll make that fill vanish. So for example, let me get rid of the fill of this of this circle here. So I delete that fill and then create a morphing sequence. We're really going to start to see something weird here. But if we exclude the outline, so the outline of the square and the outline of a circle, and we just take a look at the square fill, you'll notice that from the source drawing to the destination drawing, it just completely disappears, and you never want that. So you have to really be sure that for whatever you have in your source drawing, you also have um, a corresponding fill in the destination drawing. So the last drawing rule is that whatever you create on the source drawing in the line art layer, um, you must also create a corresponding drawing in the destination drawing in the line art layer, and the same goes for the color art layer. So you can never have something on the line art layer in one and then the color art layer on the other. So for example, let me draw something on the color art layer. Um, something like this. So then when we go to the destination drawing, if we have it in a line art layer, you'll see what happens. Like it's once again it's like one is disappearing and the other one is appearing, but they're not morphing into each other. It's like they're two separate objects. The software isn't registering that one is supposed to morph into the other. But then if you take the peach square circle and paste it on the line art layer. 
So now both the peach square and the peach circle are both in the line art layer. You'll see as you move your playhead across that the circle now morphs into the square. Um, and if you're like me, you're finding this sort of distracting, so I'm just going to paint in uh, this circle once again. And there you can see it. So those are all the morphing rules, but let's go over them one more time. So drawing elements on the source drawing will morph into the closest similar shape on the destination drawing. A pencil line can only ever morph into a pencil line, so in other words, a central vector line. A fill shape can only morph into another fill shape. Um, brush strokes are also included in that category. A color swatch can only morph into its identical color swatch. Objects that don't have an analogous stroke or fill in the source or distillation layer will vanish. And that objects drawn on the color art layer on the source drawing must also be drawn on the color art layer in the destination drawing and the same goes for the line art layer. So that's it for the tutorial, Understanding Morphing. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, Creating a Basic Morphing Sequence.